<laughs> no worries. All right. I'm going. Live, I'm going. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> are we live? Yes, we are live. Okay, then. Brilliant. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So, how's it going, guys? This is Chris. Thrift BCQ here. How's it going, guys? Uh, welcome to the uh, interview. And um, today we have a special guest here. We have um, Jamie from the channel uh, Millionaire Militaria. So, uh, Jamie, how are you today, sir? I'm good, thank you, mate. It's, um, every day is good to me because you just got to be wake up happy, bounce out to bed, and then that's Bob's your uncle. There the you rest go. of the day is started. <laughs> <laughs> Now, um, just for uh, everyone in the chat, how's it going, everyone? Now, um, if you are not familiar with um, Jamie over here, he is located in uh, the UK, correct? Uh, where in where in UK are you located specifically? Um, well, based in, in Staffordshire, it's a local fishing village. It's got a capacity of about like I don't know less than thousand plus people, two thousand people. Oh, but, okay. originally, but originally, but originally, I'm from like a big town, um, obviously called Liverpool. Um, but when I was born, I was literally born probably about seven miles away from where the Beatles um, was born. Oh no! Um, way. So, so yeah, literally. But Liverpool's is quite the dialect and language is quite hard because you can go two, three miles up the road. And the dialect and language will be a bit more twangier. Um, you'll, you'll, you'll say things what I won't normally say. Yeah. Because yeah. we've got about, apparently we've got about 20 different languages, 30 different languages in our, just in our, in, in Liverpool probably. Really? Because it's, right. it's, it's so, um, it's so multinational culture because we've got, we've got the Americans, we've got the Chinese, hmm. you know, we just get people from all over the world come over and they end up staying and living in Liverpool. But a big one is the Irish, with yeah. a big uh, yeah. Irish, Irish um, bread, and also Scottish, with a big Irish, Scottish bread um, place. But that's amazing, you know, like, <laughs> seeing how like there's so many different like yeah. languages, even though it's not a very big population. That's it's pretty crazy. It's like, you have, you have to lay, lay in the lango very quick. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, you know. But, um, but actually, I've been, I've lived, where I'm living now is uh, in Staffordshire. Uh, and I've lived there for about 50, 15 years, probably 20 years in my life. Um, and the reason why I moved from Liverpool to where I am now it's just to basically just to better my life, mm -hmm. it's because Liverpool is, is a place that you are either gonna get dragged down with 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 gang law fights, or you're gonna get drug dragged into something, or you're not. You're gonna do something, get yourself out of the situation, and better yourself. And right. at, that, at that age, I just thought. I wanted to be, I wanted to do something. I wanted to be someone, but I didn't always. When I first started, I didn't always be a reseller. I got into the. Um, I was a nightclub DJ. I used to DJ, and that's what got me out of my whole time. And then from then I went on to from DJing, and then then I had circumstances, and then I went on to reselling full time. But it's a story in itself. Now, did you start off just part uh, part time, or did you just go straight full time? Well, um, well eBay started. Um, I know eBay started back in nineteen ninety five. I started eBay. It was in end of ninety six, ninety seven. So I started um, two years after eBay literally started up. Um, and at the time, I was dabbling in it, just just dabbling, or doing bits and bobs. Because at that time, I was actually doing, like, start my DJ career. I yeah. wanted to be a full yeah. I wanted to be a professional DJ. I yeah. wanted to be on stage. I wanted to be DJing. I wanted to do all this. Um, I was concentrating on that. So for 15, 15 years in life, I, 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 I DJed in a, with Club 18s and 30s, um, doing all party game sets, 
crazy stuff you wouldn't believe. Nice. You know, nice. it involved um, a lot of the way you get the tubes of beer, pouring beer down your throat, um, setting things on fire, making things go bang live on stage, wow. and just generally wow. just being a fool. And people like people being a fool, so I thought, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a top fool, so I just went on from there. And, uh, and I made I made a um, I made a full time full time career full time job full time living after just 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 going around just DJing in nightclubs. Um, but it come to it had to come to an end sometimes because it come to the point where um, I, I had I had a son I had a kid um, and it come to the point where I was becoming a single parent I had to bring his son up by himself uh, and he was about. I brought him up since he's about four months old. So from being a nightclub DJ, from like coming home um, four, five, six in the morning, you know, to giving all that up, just to just just to re, I had to rethink my whole attitude. I had to think myself. I had to reinvent myself. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it wasn't just for me. I'd done it for at the end of the day. I'd done it. For, I'd done it for my son. Um, and, you know, I just, I just I set up what I'm, what I'm doing now. But what I, what I, how I set it up was um, I used to do car boot sales. So I used to do car boots just to make a bit of money. And then from then, I used to buy bits and bobs. And then from then, from one day, I just started selling military. Uh -huh. That uh -huh. one day, I just started selling bits of military. And it was only, like, nothing special. It wasn't nothing uh, rare. It was just bits of military, like jackets, shirts, um, bits of trousers. And I started putting them on my little market store, which I had at the time. And I found it was quite, um, it was out selling me the other stuff I had, which was like my me, um, me antiques and all that. And then people asked me, have I got this? Can I get that? And I'd just like source it. And I'd source, I'd get it, and then he'd tell Bill, he'd tell Bob, and then it just like oh. grew. And then from then on, then we ended up owning a shop. Um, but I'm lucky because my shop rent is a uh, is really cheap for what it is where I am. Um, and I'm just basically niched on the market where no, in my time centre. Uh, I am the only one who sells what I sell. Um, apart from the only thing you'd have to, if you used to come to my shop and try and buy something off me, and if I haven't got it, the only place you can get it from is probably the internet, is because there's no other shop like mine in Stafford. The full stop, it's a niche. It's like what I sell is like military clothing, surplus. I sell a lot to cadets, to the. Um, to battle reenactors, to theatre companies, theatre companies hire off me. Um, and, you know, I'll try to hire stuff as well. I'd rather hire stuff out than, uh, <laughs> than sell stuff because obviously you're hiring stuff, you're getting it back, you're getting the profits, and you've still got the fact that you can still still sell it on. So I, I tend to do a lot of, a lot of, uh, lot of my local theatre companies, they hire uniforms off me. Um, occasionally, the, the occasional prop weapons they'll need for them um, to play. But but now I just I just cashed in on a niche that no one's no one's got in my area. Yeah, I'm just yeah. literally took exploited it and just made as much as I can out of it. <laughs> well, well, that's that's amazing. I'm glad you're you're able to hone in on. A specific niche that that's not available to anyone like around you. Um, but before we we go forward, I just wanted to say how how um, hello to everyone in the chat. Um, no. Thanks for being here. Um, I left a uh, the link for uh, Jamie and his channel on YouTube on my description. So if you guys haven't subscribed yet to Jamie, please uh, go ahead and do so. He likes uh, bringing a lot of entertainment. I'd say to his videos as well as. Uh, 
seeing all the cool things that um, he does sell. And it's, it's really interesting to see. And like one of the main things I know is like the military stuff. And it's, it's really interesting to always see the types of things that um, Jamie brings in here. So um, we'll start off by saying hi to uh, Burgundy Sells here. We have Anna Velocity Sales CA. Good to see you. I saw your first video you just posted. Congratulations. Um, she's, uh, she's new. She's up here in Canada as well. So uh, if you All right, sure. Yeah, so if you haven't seen her, you can uh, check her out and uh, you can subscribe to her as well. Uh, also, uh, we have Cajun. How's it going, sir? Good to see you. We have Tim over the years. How's it going, sir? We have Val from Val Milk. How are you? Uh, Val Milk. Yeah. Wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> we love uh, that. Yeah. We have Lisa and uh, Rob from oh. Co How's it going? Hello, Lisa. Uh, Deep fried deal. Bob's not my uncle. <laughs> uh, we have uh, Craig Lanchar Picker. How are you, sir? Good to see you. Uh, Jamie's a scouser from uh, Lisa there. <laughs> You're pronouncing scouser wrong. <laughs> scouser. Yeah, scouser. You're pronouncing it. I can't even pronounce it myself. <laughs> You're pronouncing it wrong. Scouser. Working on clothes and listening. Nice. Okay. And then we have Tiffany from Eat Sleep Amazon. How are you, Tiffany? I uh, saw your uh, live yesterday. It was really good. Learned so much. Um, yeah, Tiffany's a great channel. If you want, you got, if you guys want to learn more about Amazon, uh, go subscribe right. to uh, Tiffany there. Uh, we have Emily. Emily, how's it going? Saw your video today. I love seeing like your uh, like the scheduling, especially that office. <laughs> You gotta have the office in your schedule. She's an avid office fan. All right. We have uh, just me, Kathy. Thank you for stopping just by. Just me, Kathy. Hello, Kathy. Uh, D. Fred Deal says, "Where's the multi in your name, Jamie? Did you drop the two million in the market?" Oh, <laughs> uh, so I say that again. It says, uh, "Where's the multi in your name, Jamie? Did you drop two million in the market?" <laughs> The, re the reason why I call myself multi-millionaire is because um, I believe I'm going to be a millionaire before I'm, I'm uh, I've in cash. And that's, the, that's what I mean. I'm going to be a millionaire before uh, because military, it, the price doesn't go up on this stuff. It, I mean, it, do it doesn't go down. Sorry, it doesn't go down on this stuff. It goes up, um, and I've seen in the mar the market prices go up. Um, I'm just stockpiling all this stuff up, and then one day I'm just gonna have a big one sale and then sell up, and I might just retire and like you'll never see me again. Oh, okay, but, just uh, retire. Wendy here. We have uh Ray from Nashville Flippers. Let's go in, Ray, and then we have Pigs Can Fly. All right, and then we have uh, we have Sunny from Las Vegas Thrifts. How's it going, sir? And we Hello, have Kevin Sonny. from the Thrifting Lounge. We have Airsoft, my dude. <laughs> Can I just say it once? Yeah, go ahead. Airsoft! <laughs> I needed That's to get out that resistant food. It was burned up so much. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys see, ever, ever see uh, Jamie in the chats, you know who what we're talking about. Uh, if I scream the word airsoft, then that's it. <laughs> it just means hello. <laughs> so, okay, so let's uh, let's get back into it. So, like, you you started. I mean, did you start off selling things like regularly, like any other thing, or did you just start going into military stuff uh, in the very beginning? Um, not in the beginning. In the very early days, it was all obviously just like bits of media stuff. But very, very closely, it was literally a flip from media stuff to bits of tats, to bits of bobs, to two military. So it was only like literally between first month I'd, I'd, re, I'd start a professional resale and I'd, I'd flip from, from that to, to military. So it probably, yeah, I would say it was dominantly just, just military. But I also like to buy um, bits of toys, high-end collectible toys, hard-to-find toys, um, and just just the weird, weird stuff. And the more weirder, the better. See, the more weirder it is, I think it sells 
more stranger. Um, the most weirdest thing I've had. Oh God! Is an alien in the jar? Alien in the jar. <laughs> picked up an alien in the jar. It was not. It was an alien in the jar. It was no. It wasn't alien jar. It was a pickled alien in the jar. Oh. <laughs> so, like, but the alien in the jar was um, many years ago back in Roswell area fifty one. Apparently, they found the alien. So it was like a replica mold of the alien in the jar. Um, and that's. I started to sell that sort of weird stuff and all that, um, you know, pick, pickled chicken, chicken bits and strange bits like that back in the day. Yeah. But then I soon, I soon, soon flipped um, to military because I just found like the niche market um, and niche, niche, niche sells. Um, as anyone knows, you know, over the years knows, he's, over the years he sells glass. Yeah, he's very he's very niche into his glass, so he, he understands the word as in as a niche. Um, but it's also it's it's knowing because it changes so much. You have to try and keep up with, with what what with what. So you have to like try and identify. Like I'm saying to you, how do you identify um, a World War One cap badge from a World War Two cap badge? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, there's one, there's one little telltale sign that I've learned. Uh, it helps you identify that it is probably World War One rather than say, "Oh, it could be World War One. It is World War Two. So I can give you probably give an example of that. Yeah. So is it, is it hard to tell though with like say the different uniforms that they have, or is it pretty distinct that there's a there's a huge difference? Yeah, um, also clothing's a big part of my sales as well. Um, a lot of American clothing to sell. Um, the difference between the wartime clothings now is your pockets, the way you got your breast pockets on, on uniforms. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. you've got two pockets there. And you've got two pockets on your on your on your hip there. This this standard in any uniforms. But these two pockets, now if they are on the slant, on the horizontal, then that means it's a pattern, as in like a first pattern, second pattern. Now, if the pockets are straight, that is like post-war, it's a third pattern, it's modern, because Nowadays, when you make uniforms, you don't tend to make them on the slant. You only tend to make them on the uh, on the straight. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's not with all uniforms. It's only with like specific specific types of uniforms. Uh, but on that on the Vietnam on the Vietnam clothing, uh, I know that's true because first pattern is slant pattern. Second pattern is also slam pattern, but third pattern is like straight pattern on the pockets. Um, it's just coming down to, to the lines and the shapes and how how stuff is positioned as well, because they didn't position stuff back in World War II as is, as is they did now. So you have to know that and you have to gauge it and then... And so on. Um, Okay, but it's just with the uh, with with years of looking at the stuff and and knowing it helps you out as well. Now, do you have like are you selling things right now that are from like several like different types like several wars, or is it just mainly a specific war um, that you were able to get like certain items for? Um, not necessarily. No, I'll I'll, I'll delve back in as far as um, is Crimea War, is Boer War, but it's getting all the stuff. The main stuff that I do tend to pick up quite easy is mainly me World War One, World War Two, and me oh. oh. German stuff. Mm-hmm. That's the sort of stuff I, I can pick up um, pretty pretty easily. But the stuff that sells is me bread and butter is like army surplus, like, you know, you got your, your clothing, your trousers, your army rations, um, 
you know, yeah, American army rations, uh, believe it or not, Canadian army rations, but they're quite hard for me to get hold of. Canadian army rations in the UK, I'm getting about 40, 45 pound a ration pack for them. Um, but they're really hard to pick up at a good price. Mm-hmm. Um, and then your Australian army, army ration packs, they're just like pretty much I can't, impossible to get hold of. I can't get hold of them. But they are, they are rare. Um, but it's also army ration packs from British ones from 1980s are worth money. If you can get them again, but it's all about if you can get this stuff. Yeah. And again, mm-hmm. how I get my stock is I don't just go around normal places. I'll go around these uh, special, uh, specialised military fairs. And I'll go about four, four or five specialised military fairs a year just to, just to get these specialised stuff, um, just to pick, up, pick them up, um, just to get the rare stuff. And again, it's just knowing, knowing what, you, what you're looking, looking at and... Um, Knowing the marketplace because I mean I've been do- I think I've been doing it that long now that it comes to the point where I don't really need to go on my phone and Google price if you get yeah. what I mean yeah. you yeah. know once you've been doing it for so long you'll find yourself like not really checking checking stuff out you'll find yourself just like just buying it because you know you've sold it in the past because you know the market and. As as you longer you sell it, the more the more easier it gets. Yeah, and I would think too if you're able to get um, like if you're saying that the, a lot of the stuff that you're getting are, are like a specialty places or fairs mm-hmm. like that, then I guess it would be a lot more tougher for like regular customers to try to find like a fair or like a military fair to try to even find that. But luckily, they have like a place like yours so that they can find that mm-hmm. stuff. Mm. But as, as I said, I, I used to do the um, actually stand at the military fairs. But to, to do one, I mean, I when I normally do a military fair, I normally have about an eighteen foot pitch um, set out. But you know, to set out an eighteen foot pitch, it'll take me about two 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 hours, two and a half hours to set it out. Um, but you can earn really good money. But it's just that work of like you know setting up laying out it takes two two three hours to set up two yeah. three hours to put yeah. down. but you can earn good money you can earn like two grand a grand oh wow. wow just just within like five five six hours wow that's really good it comes down to again it comes down to what you sell and what 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 you you know but, uh, but I, I, in my local area, I, I network a lot with local people. I'm always like trying to I know local dealers, and I'm always like networking with them. But I'll do swaps and trades. I'll always do swaps and trades as well. I don't just do buys and sells because it just opens the market out a bit more for me. Yeah, because not a lot of people want to come to my shop and spend like I don't know maybe hundred pound on an item. If they've got something, uh, they can swap, and I think it's worth more than what they're swapping. I'll, I'll swap it. Um, and I've had a couple of good swaps where, like, he swapped me something, and it's only worth about what? God, it's probably worth about 60, 60 80 quid. But he swapped me, like, two, three hundred pounds worth of kit. And he's, like, thinking this is, like, nah, nah, it's not really worth much. But in my eyes, I, I've got a market for it, so... Now, when when you, I, I was wondering when you sell, um, like specific uniforms, do you do you generally sell them full with like the the trousers and the the shirt, or yeah. do you sell them just separately mainly, or no. do they do you get the sale of the whole ensemble? No, I'll ge- I won't like to split them out. Uh, I'll generally sell them as a as in one whole lot. If I get them in one lot and it's a matching uniform, yeah. I'll sell them out in one lot. Um, but um, where I'm based is is quite is again it's quite niche where I'm based because I'm based on um, in Stafford uh, and but luckily enough we I've got an army barracks by me um, so what, I get a lot of squaddies uh, a lot of squaddies squad you know what squaddies are no what are those <laughs> I'm not oh, sure okay. <laughs> I 
Squaddies. Squaddies is people who's in the military. We in the British, we I call them squaddies. Well, that's what we call them here. Yeah. Squaddy okay. is someone okay. who's in the military. So if you're in the military, the terminology is in Britain is you're the squaddy. Part of the so squaddy. It's ain't that thing. It's not Scouse word. It's mainly like a British word, squaddy. Okay, it's it's not a general term. It's more of a general term than. Yeah, it's more of a general term, squaddy. Um, but I get a lot of squaddies coming, and again, when they're coming out the um, the units, you know, they've given up, they've, they've served for twenty years. They'll come in with bags and bags of stuff, and I'll just I'll buy them off them. And sometimes um, when I bought stuff off them, you've got little gems in the backpack bergens. You've got like jet boilers, you know, it's, which is worth about eighty quid. Yeah. And you don't know what's in there, and it's like, oh, it's nice, it's nice, nice find. You know what I mean? It's like nice little gem on top of it. Uh, but I also get, I also get given stuff for me for nothing as well. Just, just generally because people like I've got this. It was laying around. Yeah. yeah. It was either I was going to give it to charity shop, or I was I'm giving it to you. So I get a lot of that as well. <laughs> so, stuff for free is always good. Yeah, no, absolutely. I definitely take them, and if you can anything you can make a dollar on. I would say, just yeah, uh, you, you can't knock stuff for free. <laughs> but so, um, uh, uh, Val left your link here. Thank you so much, Val. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to Jamie, uh, please go ahead and do so. If you ever want to learn more about uh, military specifically, but uh, he also gets a lot of interesting items. Like I noticed on your Instagram, you've been getting a lot of wrestling stuff too. So those are pretty yes. cool. Like, like I know, I know you're a big, I know you're a big fan of wrestling. I know you're a big fan of wrestling stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually I got this a little reference book. At that. Oh wow! Nice. Like, and it basically what it is. It's just a book. How to identify all the old school wrestlers? That's so cool. <laughs> you know, it's just a, it's just a reference book. But yeah. it's, it's this book it specifically, specifically for the only uh, the vintage wrestling figures. Because yeah. that's why I only yeah. really sell the vintage ones. Vintage, I mean, like 1991. Yeah. Uh, but it's a nice little book just telling you the names, who they are, the special moves. So I've been, I got this today. So I've been like looking at it. Um, because. A while back, I mean, my son, I'm a single parent, and I, I love my son to bits. I'll give my son anything. Any stock in my shop, if he likes, you know, if he wants it, I'll give him it. It doesn't, doesn't bother me. And I bought about, um, about 100 wrestling figures. And I, I said to my son, come to my shop, um, you can choose whatever you want. And he chose about 50 of them. So my son's actually got 50 of my wrestling figures. Um, and then I get to sell on, resell the rest, just just to get the money back, basically. That's really cool. That's really cool. But um, again, it's another little little niche niche market to tap into. Yeah. Because I think I don't like to just tap into one niche market. I, I try to tap into like loads of loads of little niche markets because the ones like not getting up to standards you've always got something else to fall back on type of thing yeah absolutely yeah. sometimes where it'll probably be slower uh and sales yeah. maybe but uh i mean do you do you find that you there's a certain period in the the year that you find that there are more sales with uh, military items um <clears throat> to be honest <clears throat> i don't think there is this Obviously, I'd still get me me bad, bad days, me bad bad months, but yeah. it's it's still it's still it's still people sorting out. Because don't forget, it's not just your military. People don't want military just because you're in the military. Right. People want military stuff, right? Because it's 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 made so well. It's so hardcore made. It's like bomb proof. You know, literally, you can run around in it you can dive in it and it'll still be active still be usable 
And that's what a lot of people use. But I get the hikers, people from doing hiking, the bushcrafters. Um, this one thing, it bugs my mind, is the doomsday preppers. You hear the doomsday preppers? Well, I mean, I would think that it's just a way to prepare for yourself. For Well, the doomsday preppers, is, again, it comes down. I mean, this coronavirus stuff, it's made me like laugh my head off because the list of masks is like anti-coronas and all that. Like, really? Yeah. Cool. yeah, I know. So, I'm, in the, I'm in the middle of buying about 500 NBC suits, to be honest. Oh, really? Is that? Yeah, but it's not. It's, the, it's not. It's not for me because how I work my business as well is I won't just buy in stuff just for my shop to sell. Yeah. Because people know in my town centre where I am, you know I've got access. You know I can sell stuff uh, within my means, and the same people who come to me and say, Jay, can you get this? I'll go, I'll have a go if I can get it, yeah, and I'll buy it and then they'll buy, they'll pay for it and I'll just take the commission price off it. I won't even spend any of my money. I'll get them to spend the money and then I'll just say, look, you do know I'm taking a commission commission farm this fee and they'll be like, yeah, yeah, you found it, you got the, you got your contact but I won't give him the contact details. I'll keep that to me. Because yeah, of course. I'm really yeah. to get next time. Yeah, that's yes, your right? Yeah, because yeah, I've not. I'd, I made a mistake in the past of doing that. When I, in the beginning, I've given the details, and he went, "Why do we need you? Why do we need you?" Yeah. Uh, I thought, yeah. "Oh shit, actually, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Why do you need me?" <laughs> so you know. But now I've learned to keep all my contacts and all. What I, if you want something, you will ask me, and then I'll. Have a look and see if I can get it. Yeah, but I mean that's great because I mean that's the way of also building up your business too. You got to have those connections that you'll be able to know. You'll be able to get those sales um, from those connections. Yeah, but um, the most the places I love going to get me stock uh, is the military phase. Um, there's one in particular. One in particular is like it's called War and Peace. Have you heard of that? No, I haven't. What is that? Okay. Well, after you, you need to Google War and Peace because War and Peace, um, it's the biggest military show on the planet. It's down by uh, down Kent, past London, you know, like that. It's about four hours where I am. But it's the biggest military show on the planet. You've got all the dealers all over the world, like Germany, France, Australia, wow. they all come wow. as one event. But some of the stuff they bring out, you know, it's like, it's mind-boggling. It's like, it's worth, you know, a lot, a lot of money. But it's the only place in the world you can sort of um, get your hands on this stuff. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, the price of, I went last year, and but you have to, you have to camp. You can't just go there for a day. You see, it's not like a fair where you go there for a day. You will mm -hmm. not see them. Okay? It's that big. It'll take wow. it'll take about two weeks to go round it all. Plus, you see, and um, so you'll never get to see. But I only go for a week, so I try and fit in. But there's, there's loads of events going on. Like um, you've got like a big arena where you you. Um, you drive tanks in the arena, and you know it's just it's just fun for all the family. Yeah. So do you do you tend to pick up a lot of your your stuff there too at that that one? Like obviously you'll probably go there for more than one day, but I'll, do you I'll get yeah a lot of the uh, my wartime stuff. I would. Um, but again, it, the gas prices are like quite expensive because they have to pay for their pitch, and their pitch is, is really expensive. You see, so there's just certain things I'll pick up from there. Yeah. But my local local military fairs, um, you know, it, it's it's it, I pick up loads from there. Especially me, um, the one where I picked up them trench art shells. I was last year sometime, and you seen that video and you commented on it. Yes. The yes. Trench shells. That's one fair I go to about three, four times a year. And I always pick up like sort of trench art stuff like that. 
uh, and bits bits of web and, and bits of Gucci stuff. Do you know what Gucci means? No, no, what is that? Like, Gucci means like just obviously like uh, Armani stuff. But oh, it's in like, yeah, like, but not Armani, but it's like in the military side of it. If I was to pick up a military backpack and it was high end, I'd call it Gucci. You say it's a Gucci because you pay, it's like price of a Gucci handbag and. Oh, I see. Okay, it's, I see. It's, it's just the terminology. The prices. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, cool. So, um, guys, if you have any questions too for Jamie, um, anything specific uh, about him or uh, even if uh, it's about reselling, uh, please feel free to drop a message in the uh, chat if you have any questions. Um, we're already, wow, we're at, uh, half an hour past. We were at uh, uh, 19 people watching. Thank you guys seriously so much All for right. watching. Um, we are probably just um, mainly focused on uh, military stuff, but I mean, uh, I mean, obviously, I wanted to learn more as well with um, like what those those specific things that you're selling. But um, I mean, other than like say like the clothing or anything, do you sell anything? Um, and obviously, the trench art that you pick up, I think that's so cool that you you pick up that stuff because that's that's stuff that they do like while they're in. Like while they're there, so it's it's well, great. Not, not, not. necessarily. No, there's a mid now. There's a, there's a big. I don't think so. Personally, when you say trench art, it's not made. It's never made, and it's, it's always made after. A lot of trench art. There's only very rare trench art that is made in trench art. You see, yeah. yeah. There's not a lot of stuff that is actually trench art made, and that's a difference. But it is called trench art. Oh, okay. it defined, it's not a lot of the stuff you see is not trench art made. It's only very, very very little stuff that is actually trench art made. I mean actually uh, made in the trenches. But a lot of the stuff was made like after the war and it was like produced, punched out after the war. A lot of the stuff was never trench art made during the war. Oh, it's, okay, good to know. Mm. So, do you also uh, get things like uh, like firearms or anything too, or is, no? You don't really use well, any of that. I did, I did used to be well because the law lately. Well, last year the law changed. I don't know whether you know about the firearms law in Britain, especially. They changed the law where you had to have a new a new kind of certificate. Um, was a yellow certificate. And what it meant was um, if you've got an old deactivation weapon, I mean, an old deactivation weapon is worth more than if you used to start messing around with it, then mm -hmm. you're going to devalue it because you start to mess around with it. People don't want that. And that's what the law's coming in. You have to start doing this new law. Um, so I got rid of a lot of my um, weapons. I mean, the weapons I had was a German 1918 Luger. Oh wow. oh, wow. Yeah, um, and again, I had the Leonfield, um, a, a Greek G3, uh, and I got rid of all them just before the new laws started in spin because it was, I, need, and I needed a certificate to sell it, so I, I cashed in quick, got it rid of it before that come in. But, um, but mainly now, to be honest, the only weapons I'm dealing is like uh, is airsoft. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, hence the word airsoft. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are those but, good sellers for you? Um, like air spot, air spot. Yeah, they're, they're, they're all right. They're not like they're not the best, mate. But to be honest, it's just it's just again, it's just a niche niche thing that I've, um, I just thought it'd be cool just to tap into. But yeah, again, it's a bit bit more niche. But they do sell. There's there's a market out there. But you need to be more in pure into that realm. As with me, I'm like into me like me bits of water, bits of memorabilia, bits of toys, you no know, bit bits of this, bits of that, bit. So I'll put it all together and just like mm -hmm. but, um, yeah. Oh uh, we have Kent here. <laughs> uh, 
a message that says hashtag Manchester United. <laughs> and then uh, we have Crony. Do you know what, one thing that makes me go mad is what he's just said then. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> See what I mean? The bad scouts. I get this abuse all day long. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so <laughs> they're, they're... I know I'm mad. But that's the problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you know that the, the verge to, to be genius, right? To be genius, do you know what you have to be? To be a genius, yes, <laughs> is a verge of insanity. But I've tipped that one over. <laughs> <laughs> I've took it a bit too far. Now, uh, okay, so there's there's some terms I learned as well. Um, with, uh, so I just want to I want to run them by you and let me know what they mean exactly. Okay. All right, sorry. So the first one is a uh, bifter. Yeah, take it out. Gives a bifter. Like yeah. A, so what what is that? A cigarette. Oh, a cigarette. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, there's a jib em off. Have you heard jib of that? Jib em off. Yeah. Uh, jib em off. It, it's someone, I think, I've heard that term for it, but jib em off. It, I think it's someone who's just like chatting on, chatting on, chatting on, chatting on, chatting on. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that's the term. I made that phrase, but jib em off. <laughs> that, that's a term for that. <laughs> <Chip them off. laughs> so that's an older term, okay. <laughs> that's your whole scouse language. <laughs> no, 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 there's a uh, scran. Have you scran? Oh, scran food. Yeah. <laughs> I still say that now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about the scouse, uh, language, scouse language is quite lazy. <laughs> We but just I mean, can't be asked for last lessons. <laughs> but I mean, it's cool too because, like, every every place has their own type of, yeah. oh, of uh, course. like terminology. Even here, they we have our own slang as well that we probably only understand co compared to like other countries too, right? So, um, there's a uh, kex. Have you heard, you know kex? Kex is trousers. Okay. Uh, how about bevy? Bevy's drink, pint of lager. Uh, uh, and then the last one I have is uh, you're a wool. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard that? That cracks me up. That <laughs> it's it's um it's a woolly bag. <laughs> <laughs> woolly bag. I mean, it's just someone from uh, the next town. Oh, okay. That's, uh, That's so it. If you're That's not all from, it is. That, if you if you're not from like if you're from Liverpool yeah if you're not from Liverpool you're from Witness then you're Woolleybach if you're from Birkenhead which yeah. I believe Andrew Nolan is is somewhere he's a Woolleybach he's a hundred percent Woolleybach <laughs> I mean he, he proclaims he's he's some kind of scouser but he's a pla <laughs> another thing a plastic he's plastic yeah plastic scouser. So he's a, a proclaimed scouser means he's a proclaimed like <laughs> right? from Liverpool. Where are you from, mate? Birkenhead. Yeah, you're a bully back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Also known as a uh, woolly on the will. Woolly on the will, what's the, what's that? It's just some of them over the water, Birkenhead. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Some of them uh, over the pond, as you call it. I mean, I'm over the pond, but I'm not a worry back. <laughs> See, I'm learning. I'm learning some of these. Dude, you're speaking better um, English than me. You're putting me to shame. <laughs> <laughs> Ali said uh, he got gibbed off. Give him off. <laughs> he got gibbed off, Jib. Uh... <laughs> Ali's a scouser. Says Billy. Ali's a scout. She just just doesn't like to admit it. I, I believe. <laughs> uh, cool. It's like the British humor doesn't get much better. Do you understand zero other references? Will you? 
See, we're learning here too. It's a learning experience uh, for everyone that's outside of uh, yeah. the, year, the yeah. UK area. So it's good to know. Like when we visit there eventually, like I, that's one of my bucket places to visit for sure. And like, so I want to be able to learn all this. Dude, if you're going to visit in UK, you've, you've got to visit Liverpool um, city centre because it's it's so cultural in what it is. Um, we get people from all over the world, from America, China, Canadians, just to visit our little town. And it's a um, little walkabout. Like, well, we should... But is it... Um, are you going to show yeah. us your show? A little, yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's a gas mask, but it's a, a Czechoslovakian. Oh, wow. You say it's very similar to your, um, to your Russian, but not to be mistaken. You see. And the helmet on top is actually a First World War broad eye helmet. Uh, and it's actually an American one. It's actually an American First World War helmet. Um, and the only, the only reason why I know it's American is because it's got some um, special zip codes stamp, stamped into it. Now, the beginning zip codes mean it's ZA. Now, the Americans only done ZA, as in the British didn't do ZA in the beginning, mm -hmm. if you can understand what I'm saying. But that's the only so that's um, so that's this indicator of how, like, of yeah. where it was, like, initially, or? Normally, yeah. Uh, but also the shape. But the problem is with that shape, all the Wear War One helmets was, was that shape anyway. Um, so without that stamping on it, it'd be pretty hard for me to tell. But that's, in the UK, that's quite rare that to get an American first Wear War One. Um, you know, but bit of like I like being with bits of silver, bits of gold. Nice. nice. What else is there? Is that a trophy? Yeah, that's a, a 1937 sword silver trophy. Oh wow! It is. Um, this, this one. That lighter is a Cartier lighter. That's really it's a nice. Cartier. A Cartier, almost that's worth about hundred and seventy pound. That lighter. Wow. wow. It's a Cartier. I, I sold one. I sold a silver one last week. A Cartier lighter um, for the hundred pound, and that sold within like three four hours. Now this is a gold plated one, and it's also got the um, it's got a triangle stamp on it. Which means it's a bit more, a bit more niche to the Cartier range. Yeah. yeah. Um, this cap badges. I mean, that it's it. All that is, it's like a tea lantern, right? It's plastic. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's interesting. But it's a. Um, it's a tea light. It's from World War Two, um, and do you know what? Do you know where that w was would, would actually come from? No, where? Do you know what the um, NSPD, Nazi political parties, right? Yeah, I've heard, I've heard of them. Yeah. When they used to have all the um, all these big massive rallies, and you know when all the groups come together and all the big Nazi rallies. These would have been in the hall. Hundreds of these would have been in the hall, all lit up with tea lanterns in them. And this is ones that like survived. And they're only plastic, so survive in that long time, like you know. Yeah, you would think for, for a plastic item like that, you would think it would just like yeah. very yeah. easily break or just uh, be gone. So that's crazy. I mean, the, the, I think it was the other the other month. I had a, a bar of soap that was from about, oh God, I think I dated the bar of soap from about 18, 
1890, 1890, 1990, 1900, I bought a soap, but it was First World War soap. Enough, yeah. Does it look different from like a regular bar of soap nowadays? Yeah, it's it's made, yeah, it's made from a um, all all bits of crap. Really, it's made totally different from what what they're made now. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, it's, it's it's but these these like commando commando binoculars. Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, they're from where? Well, they're, they're actually dated. They're actually dated 1942 on them. Oh, wow. So the That's 1942 uh, Commando Binoculars, these, these are quite quite hard to find, to get hold of. Obviously, if we had the case for them as well, they'd be worth a lot more. But just in this condition, um, just for the binoculars, you know, you look like 60 quid. Wow, that's so crazy. Yeah. Um, well, it's all kinds of stuff. I said my shop is a, it's like two small rooms. I've got one room, which is like all bits of memorabilia. Um, I've got a lot of bits. Oh yeah, you have a ton of them in the back. That's on like all the way up to your ceiling. You see, this boot boots is one of my good sellers. Um, all these, and they win. And those are brand yeah. new, right? They're not. Yeah, just all them boots. There's probably about eight hundred pounds worth of their boots there. Wow, that's just crazy. just just in that section there. An interesting item um, is this. You see that? See, well, I'm touching. Oh, yeah. right. I, it's a World I... War Two. It's a 1942 World War Two tent, a British military tent. It is, and it's pretty much it's dead basic to put up because all it is is pretty much like a um, couple of tent poles. And um, two two pegs to put it up. Yeah, yeah. That, that's all it takes to put that up. We also see there a wrestling. <laughs> that's a that's a vintage one. That's a ninety one, nineteen eighty nine. Sorry. Oh yeah, the, that's the area to. Oh, wow, that's mm. old. That that's that's the original eighty nine one. Um, Let me put it back here. And that one. They say this, this room that I'm in is predominantly the room with just a the cabinet. It's more cabinet bits. And then there I've got my little back of me. That's where my office is. But if I come down this room, this is where I sell all my, um, my surplus stuff. Okay. You see oh, yeah, you wow. Where that's Uniforms. Oh, that's so cool. See all of them. All that is the current British Army MTP kit. I mean, Jesus, on that rail there, there's probably about three thousand pounds worth of um, of kit just on that rail. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and then you've got your other rail, the bottom shape, the two rail. Um, you know, you know what that is—the white white suit. Arctic. No. It's an Arctic. It's, a, it's a, um oversuit uh, for like like Arctic weather, like um, ski, ski weathers and all that. So it blends in basically. Mm, so that's okay. thing, right? But that one is actually dated um Falklands War nineteen eighty two. So again, it comes into the niche market. Um, the date on military stuff can make the price go up. For instance, if I've got something from 1988, yeah. and I've got the same item from 1990, the item from 19, 
89 would be worth a little bit more. It's the same item, same produce made, but it'd be worth more just the fact that the date. Just the fact that you can earn, you can niche it down. When you sell an item, you can niche it down, saying like, this is from the Falklands War, rather than say it's from the Gulf War. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, a, a, again, keyword comes down to like keywords. But that's, that's very specific too. Like, uh, there, I guess there's yeah. for that specific time period of, mm. uh, of uniform. But there's a, this whole trunk full of pouches. Oh, what kind of pouches are those? Oh, that's a, a leg holster pouch. Okay, so that goes on your leg, and then you'll attach a molly holster to it, and you'll put a nine millimeter Glock or nine millimeter Beretta or anything you want. Oh, look at this star pouches. But there's the, there's this rare rocky stuff that I got. <laughs> you got rocky stuff here, nice. Oh, rocky. Those are that old. One. These ones are not that old, but they're cle very collectible. Oh, they, okay. So they're they just they look old though. So, but, oh, okay. Is that a uh, clubber? That's Clubber's clubber, yeah. That. Yeah. This one's that's actually Rambo. Nice. So that was from your your last uh, big haul of that. It, like it was a bunch of other like different things, right? Um, yeah. Um, when I picked up the and put this laptop down. Yeah. So this is what I originally bought. That's so cool. That's so cool. This this is. This is what I wanted to buy off him. But um, when I got torn to him, he had loads of other stuff, you see. So I paid, like I said, I paid £62.50 for this. Um, and it's worth about four, 400 plus. It is, but it's, it's, it was only made in the UK. So there's this, you got all this from just one guy? Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Both, both from one guy. But I'm also in the middle of buying some other Rocky stuff off them as well. I'm buying some other Rocky stuff off them as well. Because I think he's he's, um, he's given up his old collection, you see. So, this is trying to buy all, all his collection off him. Actually, this one's quite cool, this you see the body armor? Oh, but yeah. Look at the name. Look at the name. Major problem? Major problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, the person who got that off yeah. is um, the guy who um, what's he, he makes, I think he said he makes Lego or he's involved in Lego. Yeah. He's something to do with Lego. Or some computer games with Lego, and he, he does that. Uh, and he's based in the part of the woods, and he, he used to do airsoft, and he's given it all up. So I bought all his, uh, his airsoft stuff off him, and that was one of the items I bought off him. That's so funny. <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah. I think he made like the uh, the Lego computer games. He did, but um. It's it's such like I say such a niche market um, to get into, but once you get into it, like it's kind of like you are hooked. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I knew like more about that, I would definitely yeah. want to try to find more stuff about it. Because I mean, well, I know, uh, um, yeah, I know Canadian stuff over in the UK, especially, is a uh, is hard for me to get hold of. Yeah, I can get all the pretty much anything apart from the Australian stuff and the Canadian stuff. That's the most hardest thing for me to get hold of. Um, but 
I've got some uh, American army rations. You've seen army, American army rations before, haven't you? Maybe like once before, but not not like uh, up close or anything really. But is is there a specific like era that you like picking up specifically, or it doesn't matter to you? You just like whatever. Is... Um, not specific. I just like the niche stuff. Yeah, the stuff that like I know. That's like, you know, people think well, that's what it's, it's worthless, but I know in my heart because I know it's worth more. Like, like, I mean, again, this co it comes down to niche. Do you know what that is? What is it? Uh, I can't really see it to the light. Better. Can you see it better? Okay, it says cat. Yeah. Uh, Tourniquet. I can't really see it. I, I can only see cat, but I can't really make out the other words. Mm. Well, basically, it's it's a cat tourniquet. Uh, and basically, if you like, if you get injured badly, uh, you've got a serious wound where you need to blood bleeding. You'll wrap this around your arm. But what's so different about this one is the red red tip on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And all that red tip means is a uh, is this way. This is the application end. You see, so that's okay. the only difference. Okay. It just means this is the right way to apply it, and and so on. But they go for like thirty pounds. You do. That's probably like fifty Canadian over here. So that's that's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then another another niche niche item is that one brand to watch out for Celex Celex scores a very very high end very high end military bandage uh, again it's probably like a twenty pound bandage but oh, it's wow. very niche very specialized unless you know what it is and how good it is and you know you're not gonna know. But that's like, like that. that's like the time period of uh, like the war, or is that someone something that's newer? Yeah, let me give you an example of uh, new and old. Okay, right. that one is from nineteen eighties. Okay, you've seen how oh, it's wow. packaged. It's like in a cloth. It's poorly. It's in cloth. You know, it's the same thing as this. Same thing as that. But it's just better, better produced. Yeah. And times have moved on, basically. Probably better protected too. <laughs> and the better, it, it uh, absorbs the, um, the hemorrhage a lot better, you see. I mean, it just comes down to the niche market. Um, you know, stuff, stuff like that. The BCB gel, fire gel. They have gel too. Okay, nice. It's basically it's, it's remember the old um, hexi blocks, hexi blocks, hexi block burners. Oh, okay, yes, I've heard of those. That 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 is all that is right, but it's in a gel format. It doesn't give off fumes. It doesn't give off no nasty smells, uh, and you just made it a lot better. So it doesn't give off toxic fumes. Because the old ones I remember was giving off nasty black smoke and nasty fumes because I used to use them a lot when I used to go camping. So do you have, do you have some of the rations there too? I've got um, American rations and a fe French one. I can show you a, f a French ration. Okay. okay. That's a French one. What do they usually have like in there? Um, well, different countries is different stuff to be honest. But standard, they've always got like the little. Um, they've always got the jams. They've always got the crackers. Um, and the, the French one, I've got like a pate in them, uh, and then obviously we've got like the the French meals, but they're quite tasty. Mm -hmm. I've had a few of these. 
So you've had some of them. <laughs> yeah, I've had pretty much every Russian. Well, I've had I've had Canadian Russians, I've had um, American Russians, Lithuanian. Um, oh god, I've had a few few different country Russians. And um, the taste, the nicest one I like myself is probably the uh, the the Lithuanians or the Americans. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do. But the good thing about them is uh, it's got, it's got it's got a like a heat pack in in the in the Russian pack, so you don't need to light a fire or not. And you say you can just let you put it in a bag and sn- put water in it, and it'll heat up automatically. That's so cool. That's so cool. Heats up within like ten minutes, and it's fully cooked. The, I, I want to show you something here. Like, not a lot of people, let me put my laptop down, not a lot of people can get this. I want to show you something now. See, can you see that ashtray? What is it? Is that an ashtray? <laughs> okay, right. There's a, hid, there's a hidden image in this ashtray. Can you see it? I'm going to hold it up, right? <laughs> yeah, I think. There's a hidden image in it. I'll show you the image in a minute. <laughs> Oh uh, man, I can't I can't really tell from this view. It looks like uh, uh an arm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let me reveal the image, yeah. <laughs> if I just do this and put my finger if I do that, I put my finger over it. Yeah. Can you see it now? Oh god. Okay, can you see it? I think so. See off. On. Yeah. Wow. Get it. <laughs> it's from heck? a it's from a gentleman's club from nineteen I think it's from a gentleman's club from nineteen thirty seven. So it's all it's, it's so a mad, 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 mad hidden, hidden image. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Thanks for showing this stuff, man. Appreciate it. No, nah, mate, welcome. Uh, yeah, but I've got a. Uh, I just bought about these fucking MTP gloves. You got some gloves. <laughs> I just bought about five hundred flicking pairs of these buggers. I bought about five hundred pairs of them, um, and they got they're going for about ten pound a pair. So it's going to take me a, a while to sell them, but soon to sell them all, you know, it's about five grand back. I've got just gloves. Is there, so you, how many, sorry, how many pairs do you have again? About 500. Oh, wow. 500, yeah. Because what it was is, uh, obviously I've got me, me local contacts who deal with a, a lot. And because it, I have to when I when I buy with them, uh, with, with this contact, he, he only lets me spend. I have to spend two two thousand pound uh, at a time. I, you know, it's just because that's how he deals in it. It was he one stock. You have to buy it in quantity, and you have to spend two thousand pound at a time. So I end up buying five hundred pairs of gloves, um, three hundred helmets, um, ten big and backpack covers, ten big and big and backpacks. And loads of other cars and boots support all and boots up as well. Yeah. But uh, but every end of the year he has a clear out and then he's just he's not asked, he just wants rid of the stuff to make room for his new stock. I mean, I guess when you do grab stuff, you, you grab a lot of it, like you don't well that yeah, when when I grab stuff, I will the only thing I'll grab little of is when I'm like 
going around with charity shops because I still love going around charity shops. Yeah, buying stuff. It's the, the, the thrill of the chase to, to me still. Um, but yeah, the normally when I buy stuff, I will buy it in in the quantities of other hundreds. I won't just normally deal in one or two. Uh, Crony wants to know if you have any masks to save him from Corona. Yeah, I'm gone. Two sex. <laughs> I tell you what, you need. <laughs> you need first of all, you need NBC suits. Forget about all these other jerks who's selling face masks, whatever. Yeah. You need one of these. You need the full, the full mask like that. And the uh, S10. <laughs> now the Jeez. S10. I don't know the history. Know the history of these S10s. These was a. Uh, these are what was was British issue up until 1995. Um, but it was used by the SAS. It was used by the British Army. Also used by the SAS as well. But um, but that's what you need. One of them. And another good tip about these, right? If you ever see one of these S tens, right? If you see one dated nineteen eighties, right? It's worth more than a nineteen nineties one, like I was saying. And it just comes down to the date, uh, and then you can just say like um, Falklands War rather than Gulf War. Mm -hmm. It's bad. Say, uh, same same object. How big is means Yeah. Um, about one room, two rooms, about three rooms, three rooms full. But again, out of all the stock I've got, right, I've, I've only got 400 listing. And the reason why, it's not because I'm lazy, it's the reason why is because every time I seem to list so many, it'll get picked off and sold. So it's good to me because it's just getting sold. That's what we're all here for. Yeah, exactly. It's just selling stuff because but it sucked me. I mean, I've had me, I've had this shop seven years now. No, no, six step up come on seven years I've had this shop. Uh, and I've I can't I've never had all my stock listed on the websites. I've always just come in every day. Mm -hmm. Listed about 10 to 20 items a day. I sell about anything between 5 to 10 to 20 items a day. That's really good. Which <laughs> is about the turnover. But again, sometimes I'll take low ball offers and some stuff because I just want to get the stuff moving because it's coming to a point where like, I'm, I'm looking at boxes. I mean, there's, there's stuff there, the stuff there. And then there's boxes Underneath, mm -hmm. yeah. you see, I mean, just like this stuff's everywhere. Got ammunition tins, but a lot of people would buy these ammunition tins off me and uh, they're turning them into like little stoves, no camping stoves. They turn them into like camping stoves, like putting a little hole in the back, putting a tube in the back so the smoke can come out. And they use them as like little camp and burners, as little heaters and all that. So. This one's good. Cool. This picture. Connection. <laughs> See that. Over there. Mm -hmm. Mm. You see that? Yeah. It's the um, no, the Red Baron. The Red Baron, yes, I've heard of that. Yeah, the German, the, the famous, uh, the famous German pilot who, who sniped loads of British British pilots and all that. That's the uh, part of the Red Baron. Oh no way! Wow, I'm just playing, and that's a, a print picture of him. It's stuff like, again. That's very, very niche markets. You know, it's, it's not something you're not going to come across every day. Mm -hmm. 
But again, the, 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 they're the sort of things that sell maybe airsoft weapons. They're just airsoft. Oh, there's an airsoft. Yes. Uh, Pat, I, I was just going to ask you, the laws in Canada, you can't have airsoft, can you? Uh, they, they do have an airsoft here. It's just that I don't know exactly how strict they are with the rules over here. Um I know I believe he's national firearms and, and airsoft for sure, but I don't know exactly though. This this is this is been one of my new airsoft weapons I just got in. Yeah. Is it AK? Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. Never seen that AK. airsoft. Yeah, yeah airsoft AK. <laughs> It doesn't fire as good as me American weapons are found, but, but yeah. But I do try to play. I do. Oh, I do try to play airsoft every weekend if I can myself. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. Just to uh, let a bit of steam off. <laughs> But it's always good if you can run around and just let you shoot people and go. Ah. So when when you're playing with everyone, do you yell airsoft while you're while you're shooting at people? Airsoft. You just look at me thinking. It's like we know you're playing airsoft. <laughs> like fuck that. <laughs> No, I, I, I love it because it's just the banter. I just love, I love the banter. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm type of geezer oh, who loves okay. so, banter. So, uh, what's it called? We're we're already well past the hour. So that's like, thank yeah. you guys so much for being here. Seriously, it's uh, it's been so cool, like learning about the like that military stuff. And thank you for showing us around your like your area of all the different military stuff and just learning more about it because uh, honestly it's it's very interesting to to learn more about and like it's it's cool that you that's something that you really specialize in and you know your stuff so um like guys if you um if you haven't again if you haven't subscribed yet to jamie um he's he's very wealthy like with knowledge in terms of the with uh, that type of stuff so if uh please feel free I also to do skits don't forget skits. skits yes if I don't know if you've seen one of them, but he does a, a cooking with Jamie in uh, one of them. That was pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's really funny though. Those those skits, I love when you do them. It's just something that's like just it's just to break up the ice and just just because why not? Yeah, just trying to uh, I guess loosen everything. You gotta yeah. <laughs> Crowd, not, you know? not, not everything in life can be serious, I think. You've, you've got to let Steve, you've got to... What, what, what to say? I live life, not let life live me. Yes. yes. That's the same, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Live life, not let life live you. Fail that, get a frying pan, it's all over your head and you sort it. Happy days. <laughs> but no, I've got... I'm, sort of trying, I'm thinking I've got another one coming out soon, hopefully, but I don't know when I'm going to take it a bit too far. But that's the whole point. Yeah, it's okay. But, that's uh, okay. <laughs> but um, guys, thank you again uh, so much for watching. Um, we'll definitely, uh, hopefully we can do this again in the future uh, and see how everything's going. And uh, yeah. hopefully uh, we can... Yeah, just understand more too, because uh, it's honestly it's really cool to learn more about that stuff. So, mm -hmm. uh, thank you guys again for stopping by, and uh, we will see you on the next interview. Thanks, guys.